Hi, this is Steve Mornazavi. I'm a pain management doctor, and I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about spinal stenosis. I'd like to go over the causes of spinal stenosis as well as some of the symptoms and treatment considerations. Note that this is just an educational video, and if you have any further questions, you should contact your doctor or feel free to call our office or visit us online at www.valleypainspecialist.com. Spinal stenosis is defined as a narrowing within the canal of the spine, either in the cervical, thoracic, or lumbar area, which can cause pressure on the spinal cord and the nerve roots. The picture on the left shows you what a normal spinal canal looks like, and you can see the spinal cord within the canal as being intact, whereas the picture on the right shows you a somewhat narrowed or stenotic spinal canal. What is the cause of spinal stenosis? The most common cause of spinal stenosis is aging. As we age, we develop arthritis in the joints of our spine, which are called facet joints. This can lead to bone growth or spurs around the joint, which is called spondylosis. As these joints get larger, like the knuckles in your hand get larger as we get older, they don't expand into air, but rather they expand into the spinal canal or the areas on the side of the spinal canal called the foramen where the nerves exit the spine. And they take up space either within the spine centrally or off to the sides in the foramen. Other causes of spinal stenosis can include slippage of the spine where one bone or vertebrae slips forward or backward on another. This slippage can be either degenerative or can be traumatic. Slippage is defined as spondylolisthesis, and if the slippage is unstable, we call it ismic spondylolisthesis. If it's stable, we call it degenerative spondylolisthesis. Unstable spondylolisthesis or slippages are the result of small fractures on an area of the spine called the pars and patients have what's called a pars defect or spondylolysis. Patients can also have hereditarily narrow spinal canals. This can lead to symptoms of spinal stenosis at a younger age than would normally be expected. In most patients, symptoms of spinal stenosis do not occur until at least 50 years of age. This shows an image of someone's lumbar spine with a slippage of the lumbar spine on the sacrum. The yellow line shows the spine angle coming down and then going back and coming down again as depicted where the blue line is. The blue line corresponds to S1, which is the first sacral segment, whereas the vertebrae above that refers to L5, which is the lowest lumbar vertebrae. And you can see the two arrows show that the spine is out of alignment. Again, this can either be stable or unstable. Most cases are stable and do not require surgery unless the degree of spondylolisthesis is severe. Tumors can also create space occupying lesions within the spinal canal. Tumors can be solid or fluid filled. Solid tumors can be either benign, malignant, or can even be something as simple as herniated disc, which is more prevalent in the younger population. Fluid tumors can arise from the joints in your spine called facet joints and can be cystic, or they can arise off of the nerve roots and again cause compressive type of lesions in the spine. Blood can also form spinal stenosis in the case of bleeding within the spinal canal or hematoma, epidural or spinal hematoma. Trauma can also be a cause of spinal stenosis. In this case, the C3 vertebrae is fractured and displaced backward or posteriorly into the spinal canal, causing compression of the cervical spinal cord. This image shows a herniated disc in the lumbar spine with compression of the foramen 
or the white areas where the nerves are trying to exit the spine. Shown above, this herniated disc is a smaller bulging disc, and shown below is a normal foramen without any space-occupying lesion. Again, the symptoms of spinal stenosis, what are they? Well, primarily back pain or neck pain, depending on the area, especially with activity. Patients can also have leg pain with walking, which we call neurogenic claudication. Note that leg pain with walking can also be the result of blood flow problems as well. Patients may have heaviness or a feeling of clumsiness in their legs or arms, a sensation of cold or tingling sensations, and a desire to lean forward and hold on to something when walking, which we call shopping cart sign. This helps open the spine up and alleviates and reduces pressure on the nerve roots as they're trying to exit the spine. The treatment of spinal stenosis can be just that, simple changes in posture or leaning forward to open up more space for the spine and the nerve roots. Patients may also benefit from medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication or opioid medication. In many cases, patients are referred to our practice and have already tried and failed the above measures and were able to alleviate their pain with minimally invasive procedures called epidural steroid injections. These injections can be done with a variety of techniques, including interlaminar, transforaminal, or caudal, with transforaminal being the preferred method of technique in most patients. Note that these procedures are not curative, but can alleviate the symptoms of spinal stenosis for weeks to months to years, and avoid the need for decompressive spinal surgery or laminectomy, which is a more invasive type of back surgery. This image depicts what a transforaminal epidural steroid injection would look like under x-ray guidance, with the black shadow being x-ray dye being deposited along one of the spine nerve roots as it exits the spine. Again, these treatments, when done properly, can be extremely effective and can lead to very happy patients, improved quality of life, reduced pain and reduced suffering. This is just a brief overview of spinal stenosis, its causes, manifestations, and treatment, and it only intended as an educational guide. Please consult with your doctor, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact our office at 610-954-9040, or visit us online at www.valleypainspecialist.com.